Okay, Roseanne, this was the second article that we looked at. So this was the third portion of the class and really the final portion of the class, um, at least before we started talking about the next assignment, which was the annotated bibliography. So again, looking at this particular one, it is an educational administration quarterly article. So because of that, you note that the abstract here is a very structured abstract. So if I'm reading through this article, I'm probably going to spend 30 to 60 seconds looking at this particular thing because they're going to tell me about the purpose of the article or the purpose of the study. They're going to give me some information about the research design. They're also going to tell me what the main findings were. Now, as I'm looking through this, I'm going to skim through here. So here I start the introduction on page 501. And again, I'm looking for key things. So I'm skimming this, this particular section looking for what it is they're interesting and you know they're interested in looking at so the first two paragraphs they really don't tell me much they give me a bit of background but it's this third paragraph here that really sort of provides the crux of what they're doing so they're looking at a quantitative and qualitative research study um, into ver charter school closures in North Carolina from you know that eight-year period and they've got what is it, two research questions here. Um, you know, how do accountability mechanisms contribute to school failure? Actually, just a single research question, sorry. And then they basically tell us actually what they conclude in these two sentences here. So, you know, that really gives me a good sense as to what the article is going to be about. Now, as I'm looking through again, the context, this is going to tell me a little bit about the background. So this is the literature review. So, if again, if this is something that's right up my alley, this is something I'm going to read carefully. If it's not right up my alley, in all honesty, I'm probably going to skip most of this. So I'm skipping basically the last bit of 501. I'm skipping all 502, all 503, all 504, all 505, all 506, 507, 508. But you know, if this is closer to what's up my alley, you know, I'm looking at this and one of the things that I talked about in class was the notion of as you're going through your literature review, one of the things you want to do is you want to narrow the focus of your literature review. So you start with something very broad. And this is actually a good example of that. So if you're looking for sort of a model that you can follow in terms of how to go about constructing a literature review, this is actually a very good one. So if you look at this, they start off with basically a page, uh, actually uh, two and a half pages that look at charter schools in North Carolina in general. So they basically go through and tell us about what's going on with charter schools in there. You'll see they've got some literature that they cite in there. But it's a very broad topic, charter schools in North Carolina. Now, if you look at the next thing, they sort of narrow that focus into the failure of charter schools. So they're not just interested in charter schools in North Carolina, but they're interested in why charter schools fail. So they give us basically roughly two and a half pages of that. And one of the things that you'll note is that there are going to be four types of accountability that they look at. So, you know, they again look at, you know, failures caused often by a lack of accountability. So they give us a little introduction about that lack of accountability. And then you'll see right at the end of that section, you know, in that introduction, they say there are four key types. And you'll note they talk about performance accountability, market accountability, bureaucratic accountability, and financial accountability. So you see that this literature review sort of models that I always describe it as a funnel, you know, that starts very broad and then comes in a very narrow focus so that by the time you finish the literature review, the reader is looking at the issue through a very specific lens that you've provided. So in the case of this particular lens, it's the lens of looking at, okay, well, what causes, you know, what do we know about charter schools, specifically in North Carolina? What causes them to fail? Accountability seems to be one of the main reasons that they fail, or maybe a lack of accountability. And that accountability often comes in one of four flavors or one of four types or forms, performance, market, 
bureaucratic or financial. So that's a very specific lens that they've now provided us to look at this particular issue. So in terms of reading the article itself, I would likely skip most of the last five or six pages, all that literature review section. But in terms of looking at your end product, so that literature review that you're going to create for me at the end of the course, this is actually a very good model of that sort of narrowing of focus that you can use to provide the reader with, you know, this is where there is a gap in the literature. This is where we really need to focus upon in terms of the research so that when you get to 690, the specific question or questions that you're interested in studying are plainly obvious to the reader because in your literature review, you've really provided that context for them. You've given that the lens to look at. Um, but in terms of actually reviewing the article, I would have skipped most of that. I just wanted to mention that in terms of giving you a, a context or a schema for what it is that we're trying to create at the end of this. So having skipped those five or six pages in terms of reviewing the article, again, I'm looking at this for specific information. So I'm seeing here, for example, that in terms of the quantitative data that they're looking at. They actually have a couple of pieces. You'll see they talk about a couple of databases here. Um, actually, they're talking about three or four databases here. So their quantitative data are coming from these various databases that they're looking at here. Um, their qualitative data they talk about coming from a number of sources. So if you look here in this particular section, you know, it comes from newspaper articles, minutes from charter school board meetings, minutes from the court hearings or appeals, communications with members of the non-operational charter school advisories. So you get a sense as to where the data is coming from. Now you'll note they don't give you much of a sampling procedure. They don't specifically tell you what it is. You can probably guess what it is. It looks to be more of a purposeful sample if I had to make a guess. Although again, I'm making an educated guess because the authors never tell me what it actually is. It may be a convenient sample. I don't know. I, I don't know these authors. Um, you know, I look at their institutional affiliation up front and, you know, they appear to be all from the University of Georgia. The study is taking place in North Carolina, so I don't know if that's a convenient sample for them. It may not be. My guess is it's more of a purposeful sample, but I don't know why they picked that. Um, you know, so when I look at, you know, they tell me what the qualitative and quantitative data are here. They tell me that they are using an inductive analysis approach for at least the qualitative data. So they analyze the qualitative data using an inductive analysis approach. So that tells me a little bit about the data analysis, at least for the qualitative data. You'll note that in the methodology section, the data and method section, they don't mention how they're actually analyzing the quantitative data. It's actually kind of interesting because, you know, they'll talk about the variables here and they'll go through all that information. But it's not actually until you get to the findings where they actually, st oh sorry, it's in the analytic structure where they talk about how they're going to deal with the quantitative data. In this case, they're going to use a event historic analysis or an EHA um, as they abbreviated here. So I've got to really sort of search for this. So when I'm looking through these five or six pages here that talk about the data and method section, while I don't necessarily have to read closely, I do have to at least skim closely looking for those specific things because you'll note they don't have them all in the same place. You know, it would make sense to me that when they're talking about it here, they talk about the quantitative data here. You would think they talk about how they are analyzing that quantitative data, but they don't. They skip that. And then they talk about the qualitative data here. And then you'll note in the very next paragraph, they talk about how they analyze the quantitative data, the qualitative data, sorry. But they skip like what? Two, three pages, four pages, five pages actually, before they tell you that it's the event history analysis that they're using to uh, essentially analyze the quantitative data. So it's not as straightforward as the previous article that we looked at, but it is one of those things where you're skimming looking for that specific information. You know, and again, when I get to the findings and results section, 
Like the previous article, I'm going to skip all of these findings and results. So that's what, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, ten page, eleven pages that I'm going to skip here. As you know, and I'm going to get to the conclusion. And again, like the previous article, if you remember, the previous article had the three paragraph conclusion. This one has a four paragraph conclusion. But again, this really summarizes everything that they've said in the findings and results section as well as in the discussion section. So while I was looking for specific things in the other sections, in these four paragraphs that I've got here, what I'm looking for is I'm going to read through these four paragraphs in a more close manner, you know, because this is essentially the crux of the article. This is what the authors want me to remember when I finish the article. So these four paragraphs here, is it four? One, two, three, four. Sorry, these five paragraphs here are essentially, this is the so what, this is the takeaway. So I'm going to spend two or three minutes looking at these particular items, items here so that you, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, I had to pause it there because um, my throat was bothering me a bit. Um, so those are the ones I'm going to spend sort of the most time on as opposed to just looking at them. Now, one of the things I did in class was I, in addition to looking at the abstract, because if you remember, the difference between an abstract and an annotation, as I mentioned in the email, and this is one of the things we talked about in class, is that the abstract tells me essentially what the article was about, whereas an annotation tells me what the article was about as well as giving some sense of evaluation. So when I'm looking at this abstract, if I were to annotate this particular article, I can look at this and I can say that something to the effect, and I'm thinking off the top of my head here now in terms of an annotation, but an annotation is going to be three to five, maybe seven sentences in length. So in this case, I'm going to look at it and say, you know, that the authors were studying the reasons why charter schools close and the specific factors or influences that cause those closures. The study took place in North Carolina and looked at a variety of schools that had closed there and specifically focused upon two particular charter schools that had closed, which they presented case studies. In the instance of these particular charter schools that closed, the authors found that the performance accountability was the one area which was least likely to influence the school closure. One of the recommendations was that the fact that this study took place only in North Carolina and it would be worth looking at other jurisdictions where charter schools have closed. So I've basically given you roughly a five sentence annotation there. You'll note that the first two or three sentences really sort of summarized the purpose and the research design that you found. You'll note that my evaluation focused primarily upon the findings. And you'll note in the abstract, they talked about how they found that market accountability, bureaucratic accountability, and financial accountability were the ones that were most likely to cause a school to close. Now, if you remember back to the four types of accountability, you'll note that we found performance accountability was one of the four areas. And that was the only one that wasn't mentioned in the abstract. So essentially that how students performed in the charter schools was kind of irrelevant as to whether or not the schools closed. So that was what I chose to focus upon in the annotation. So that was part of my evaluation. The other part of my evaluation, you'll note that they talk about how financial accountability played a key role in the school closures in these two North Carolina charter schools. I talked about how this was focused specifically upon North Carolina, and there are 49 other states that 
you know, this may or may not be consistent with. So it would be worthwhile to look at those 49 other states to see if those kinds of findings were consistent. So you see how, I mean, now my annotation was probably a little more nuanced than what your annotation will be. You might be a little bit more blatant and say, you know, one of the strengths of this article was, or I felt one of the weaknesses of this article was, and it's a perfectly acceptable to say I, you know, to use that first person, or you can use third person, whatever you feel more, more comfortable with, but that's sort of what you're looking at with these annotations. So that was really kind of what I focused upon in the third and final section of the class a couple of Fridays ago, and um, that's really where I'm going to end this, this second video for you.